with every year, Linux gets only better and better, but in terms of video editing, it still struggles to compete with other systems on a market. So today I'll do my best to answer following questions. What is the current state of video editing on Linux? What software do we have? Can we rely solely on free and open software? Is it possible to edit a commercial project with it? And what is the future of video editing on Linux? I want this video to be useful for both of you who shoot and edit videos on a commercial basis and for those who want to do something simple, like to share video game footage or to edit some clips from your last vacation or to make a vlog. So I'm gonna break this video into multiple use cases, meaning that different tasks requires different codec support, color grading tools, online features and etc. If you have some footage captured from computer screen, video game or your web camera, probably it's already compressed into some widely used codec, like H.264 or H.265. More than that, your smartphone, as well as almost every budget-friendly camera available on the market, shoots into H.264, 265 or Apple ProRes, which means all non-linear editors available on Linux, both free and proprietary, will be able to handle your your footage without a single issue. Modern smartphones, as well as some relatively inexpensive cameras, nowadays produce good enough image just out of the box. So if you don't have a specific artistic vision for your project, you'll be satisfied with the result. These three file formats are compatible with all post-production software, so you can do the job by using video editor of your choice. And on Linux we have a really wide selection of post-production software to choose from. However, two of the most popular video editors on the planet, Adobe Premiere and Final Cut, are not available on Linux. I guess Final Cut will stay as an Apple exclusive to keep creators inside their walled garden, while Adobe simply doesn't care about Linux, at least for now. Good news, you can do a lot of things simply by using free and open software. It is a great pleasure for me to inform you that FlatHub alone can provide you with five different non-linear editors, including OpenShot, Shortcut and KDN Live. We also have some great proprietary apps available on Linux, like Lightworks and DaVinci Resolve. Almost all post-production software available on Linux also support Windows and Mac. So if you are thinking of switching to Linux, but not sure what you will be able to achieve, feel free to install these apps on your current system to understand what you are going to get, what limitations you might face, or what opportunities await you. If you are a beginner who wants to try editing for the first time, my advice is not to spend a dime on proprietary software until you are 100% sure that it will solve your problem. Until then, you can give a try to a free non-linear editor like Gideon Life. Probably it is already included in your distro repositories, so it'll take you a single command like sudo apt install Gideon Life to get it on your PC or sudo pacman if you are using Arch by the way. KDN Live can generate proxy files to enable faster editing workflow. It has a nice catalog of basic transitions, it does support wide variety of audio and video formats and it is included in almost every popular software repository and can be found on FlatHub. Just please keep in mind that it does not support GPU acceleration, so rendering time is going to be ridiculously long compared to DaVinci Resolve. Also, KDN Live is not the best tool in terms of color grading. But again, if you need to do something simple, like to fix a white balance or slightly desaturate your image, he'll be fine. So whether you decide to pick up a phone or to use a mirrorless camera, KDN Live will allow you to edit those clips. The same goes for video games. If you want simply to share a clip or to start a YouTube channel about gaming, you'll be satisfied with Gideon Live. But as soon as your project requires something more specific, if you have a certain artistic vision, maybe you were hired to make a commercial or you want to make a film, chances are high that Gideon Live will not allow you to release full creative potential. Let's say you have bought an expensive cinema camera. 
Well, now you are getting into realm of proprietary raw codecs, which by design are meant to be color graded. Bad news, KDN Live won't be able to even open them properly. Motion tracking isn't reliable, you can't import 3D objects and generate 3D particle effects. It has no implementation of cloud features that can help multiple users to collaborate on the same project in real time. Look, I'm not saying that it is impossible to make a commercial project relying only on free and open software, though in some cases, depending on the size of the project, post-production pipeline may involve professional editors, sound engineers, VFX artists, colorists and more, and it is really hard to do all post-production with a team this big in one app like Gideon Life. Probably that is why System76 decided to promote proprietary apps like Resolve and Lightworks on the PapOS landing page alongside with free software like Blender and OBS instead of OpenShot or KDN Live. If you are editing alone and you want to be fully committed to free and open software, you can try to overcome limitations of KDN Live by learning other FOSS applications. You may use another open source app specifically for digital compositing. You may try GIMP to create custom fancy titles. You may convince yourself into using free version of DaVinci Resolve to color grade your clips and to compress them into a format that is supported by Gideon Live. But please consider that you would spend huge amount of time dragging stuff from one app to another. And if you are working in a team and you have to collaborate with other people who use Adobe products or Blackmagic Cloud, you know, you would probably prefer to stay on the same page with your team rather than becoming that guy. Me personally, I don't mind using proprietary software, though I can totally understand those of you who dismiss even the idea itself of using proprietary application, even a good one. But in order to grow, Linux as a platform has to satisfy both beginners and professional editors. And there are a lot of professionals who heavily rely on proprietary software, who need a specific tool or plugin or a certain cloud feature. Maybe right now they are heavily loaded, maybe they have market standards to comply with, and the process of learning free software will result in losing up to half of their speed in a short distance. So for them it's a deal breaker. Do you know what else might be considered as a deal breaker? Troubleshooting. Don't get me wrong, both DaVinci Resolve and Gideon Live are quite stable, at least on Linux. But sometimes we all have to deal with some sort of a small minor problems, often related not to editing software but to system itself. To me it's not a big deal, I don't mind spending half of an hour solving audio delay in Pipewire or updating some packages. I treat every new encountered error as an opportunity to grow to understand how the system works, but I think it is naive to expect the same from other folks, you know, professional photographers, video editors, colorists, VFX artists, who might find themselves slightly disappointed by the fact that they need to go an extra mile to make things work properly. So when I started this video by saying that in terms of video editing, Linux still struggles to compete with other systems on the market, I was talking about this. Some post-production software is missing, some takes time to set up properly. Oh, and what about 10-bit color support? It's not there yet. IAC playback in DaVinci Resolve? Nope. Proper support of high DPI display? Nope. Editing on Linux isn't perfect. But hey, it is way better than it was 10 or even 5 years ago. Nowadays you can edit a commercial project on Linux from scratch to finish. Probably you can't do that with free and open software. Yet. But it is still a huge win compared to what we had in 2015. And I don't want to be mean to KDN Live. Thanks to free software developers, we have tools to tell a story, to share our passion and, maybe what's more important, we have freedom to teach each other. 
I expect force editors to become more versatile and more stable in the next 5 years. I expect KDN Live to finally embrace GPU acceleration. And also Olive makes great promises in terms of node-based compositing on effortless color grading. It is indeed an exciting time to be a Linux enthusiast, and I expect it to become even better. This was Reluctant Anarchist, and I have nothing left to say.